What is up everyone and welcome to the third part of this tutorial series about the Oculus Interaction SDK. In last video we learned how about how to grab an object with different behavior and in this video we will have a look at how to add and pose when we grab an object. As always make sure to subscribe to not miss the next episode and the source code as well as some exclusive content are on my Patreon. But without further ado let's get started. Okay, so we are back where we were at the end of the second episode. Now I'm going to make some more room for the next object we will use. So let's select all of our interactable with the door pivot as well and move them to the left. Perfect. Now I'm going to create an object from scratch that we will be able to grab with hand pose. We could create another cube, but to show you all the possibility of hand pose, I think a more complex object will be more illustrative. So let's search in our project folder for mug mesh. We can drag it in our hierarchy and put it on a table. Next, I'm going to change its material to red. Now to make this object interactable, you already know what to do from watching the two previous episodes. First, we need to add a rigid body. In my case, I'm going to set it to kinematic. Then we need to add a transformable. And now we could also add any transformer we want like we did for the other cube, but I'm going to keep things simple by using the one hand free transformer that is added by default when we click on play. Now, if you remember, the last thing we need to grab an object is the hand grab interactable component. But in the case of hand pose, the hand grab interactable will be linked for each pose we want on our object. So I guess that now we can just move on to actually creating the hand pose. To do this, I'm going to first create an empty game object. We can rename it hand pose uh, recorder. And next, we can add a hand pose recorder component. Now, as you can see, this component only needs two parameters, a reference to the end we want to record. So for this, I'm going to drag the right hand under the input of VR in the end parameter. Secondly, we need to add a reference now to the object we want to record and pose on. So for this, I'm going to drag here our mug mesh. Then we can see that by default, we will be able to press on the space key to record a pose. And if we want to have a direct preview of the pose we have generated, we can click here and add a ghost hand. Okay, perfect. Now our hand pose recorder is set up correctly. Now what's left for us to do is to set up the hand pose recordable. So we can select back our mug and then add a hand pose recordable component to it. And with this, it's basically it. Everything is ready to record the pose when grabbing our mug. So let's click on play. To record during runtime, I'm going to approach my right hand on our mug and then press on the space keyboard to record the pose. Awesome. Now, as you can see, a ghost hand just appeared with the pose we just created. And we can go again with any pose we want. Okay, so I've recorded all the pose I wanted on this mug. Now, before leaving play mode, we need to go to our mug game object and click on store pose to generate a file with all the pose we made. And now we can leave play mode. Okay, simply next, we need to load the pose back on our mug. We can drag in the pose collection, the previous store position, then click on load. And now, as you can see, by doing so, we have now our pose showing here on our hand pose recordable. And all of them are now added as a tile of our mug. Good job. Oh, and by the way, to not record any more pose by pressing on the space key by accident, we can simply disable the hand pose recorder for now. So if we select one of our pose, it is displayed on the mug and we can adjust each finger like this. So let's take some time to adjust each pose correctly. So as you can see, each pose has a end grab point component with some information about what we can do while holding the object. For example, by default, our thumb and index will be locked, the middle and ring finger will be constrained, but the pinky finger will be able to move freely. So for the end holding the handle of the mug, we can leave it like this, but for the others, I'm going to set all finger to lock. And then, as you can see, we can also say if the pose is for the right hand or the left hand, but to generate a mirror pose for the left hand based on the right hand pose, it's actually really simple. We can select one pose and click here on create, mirror, and grab interactable. And there you go, we have now a copy, but for the left hand. And now let's do the same, but for the other pose. 
Okay, now that we understand better the component of each end pose, we still need to set up the end grab interactable like a basic grabable object. So I'm going to select all of them and we can drag the rigid body of our mug in the rigid body parameter. Next, we need to click on our mug mesh and this time drag in the transformable interactable list all of the end grab interactable that we have. Oh guys, I noticed that I just forgot to add a collider on the mug earlier that we need to grab it. So don't forget to click here and add a mesh collider that we can set to is convex equals true. There you go. Now everything is ready and let's try what we've made by clicking on play. Oh, but what's going on? We can grab the object, but it's not working. Why is our end not looking to the end pose position we made? And so the reason is that the ends needs to be able to lock when holding an object, which we don't have right now with the setup we made in the two previous episodes. But don't worry, it's not that complicated to fix this. So if we go to our input of VR, we have here the end visual for the left end and the right end. Now to lock these ends in place, I'm going to disable this end visual and instead search in the project window for left end synthetic. We can drag it under the left end and then right end synthetic and do the same but this time drag it under the right hand. And as you can see the children of the synthetic end is exactly the same as the end visual. So what we are doing here is simply adding a new parent to our end visual with this synthetic end modifier that we will be able to use for locking the pose. So for the left end synthetizer we can drag the left end in the modify data. Do the same but for the active stave down below. And finally on the end grab interactable visual, drag here or end grab interactable under the left end. And here you go, now we have set up everything for the left end. Now let's do the same but for the right hand. Perfect and now the long awaited moment has come. Let's click on play to see if our end pose are working. And there you go guys, when we try to grab our mug, it snapped to the closest pose we have and it works even for the left hand on all the pose. That's awesome. Now you can see the difference in the locked state of each pose that I was looking earlier. When holding the mug on the handle, I can move all of my other finger with the picky uh, freely moving. But with the other pose, my hand is locked and I cannot move any finger. That really so is something awesome to create more precise grabbing and I love it. Now there are some important remarks that you need to take into account with this end pose. So bear with me. As the pose are children of our mug, it's important that the scale of the mug is 1 1 1. Otherwise, as you can see, the size of the ends can change. So if you have any object that is not 1 1 1, like uh, the cube grabable that we made in the two previous episodes, you can still change the scale of each end. Or the best thing to do is actually to move the mesh renderer and the mesh filter on a new children that you will be able to scale without hurting the size of the pose. Now another remark is that obviously this end pose setup does not work with controller grabbing uh, with the setup we have right now but the good news is that as I've talked earlier uh, in the first episode there is a way we can fake that we are using ends even with a controller and this is a solution to this problem. Now last but not least Sometimes you might want to reproduce the same end pose on a surface. For example, we can keep this pose holding the mug and move it up and down. So thanks to this awesome interaction SDK, it is in fact possible. You can select the pose you want, so this one holding the mug in my case, and add a surface component. And you can see here that we have surface for box, sphere and cylinder. And now in the case of this pose, I'm going to select cylinder. We can drag this component in the surface parameter or the end grab point and then set up the surface parameter to match our cup. So in my case let's do 360 degree angle. We can uh, set up the start point at 0 0.05 and then the end point at uh, minus 0 0.03. And there you go, now we can already see our end moving along the cylinder, that's awesome. 
And here you go guys, here is the marvelous result. This Enpo system is really working well and we can thank Oculus Dev team for this. Now I hope that you enjoyed watching this video till the end and that you learned something new. If you did and want me to make more video, you can leave a like and subscribe down below. It's always greatly appreciated. And help yourself with the source code that you can find on my Patreon. All the links are in the description below. Now see you on our next adventure and bye bye.